I'm sure you all had a pretty similar experience to me, especially if you're into PC hardware on any level. You get home after a long day of work, you head inside and you drop your keys, put on your most comfortable pair of slippers and head over to your desk. You sit down and check your phone and all you see is Ryzen reviews. But then you head over to the internet to check them out and suddenly you look over to your 1700X and, well, you're not as happy with it anymore. So the question that I'm going to try and answer today is, should you be unhappy with your current Ryzen 1 CPU? And if you have any CPU in the Ryzen 1 lineup, is there a reason to upgrade to Ryzen 2? Wait, I should probably say hello first. Hello and welcome. My name's David and this is the channel where I do tech stuff. Now, before I carry on any further, I just want to make a little bit of a disclaimer. I'm going to put aside the whole controversy around the Anand Tech. Anand Tech. Anand Tech? Anyway, I don't know how to say their name, but the website's review, which showed Ryzen 2 dominating everything Intel has to offer in gaming scenarios, which seems a little bit unlikely. So I'm going to be focusing on results from pretty much all the other reviews. In fact, the one that I'm going to primarily focus on is the one from Gamers Nexus, because, well, everybody knows that they are like the only people that know how to review things properly. When looking at the reviews of the Ryzen 2 CPUs, it seems like quite a familiar story, something we've been seeing from Intel over the last five or so years. It seems like it's nothing more than just kind of another generational improvement. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because a generational improvement over Ryzen 1 is still good. We're getting higher clocks, we're getting better gaming performance. XFR Boost 2 is really cool and that does genuinely help get higher frame rates. Uh, better memory support is always exciting, especially considering how everybody knows how bad Ryzen 1's memory kind of compatibility was and considering how much of a difference kind of higher memory speed makes, better RAM compatibility is always welcome. So yes, it's not the most exciting release, but it still helps. And one of the things that's the biggest improvement over the previous generation is, well, voltages. It's more efficient. It means that you can run at four point something gigahertz at a much lower voltage than Ryzen 1 could, which is less straining on the CPU and it means you invariably use less power. You might know, really struggle to get invariably out of there. Um, but you know, it might only equate to like $10 a year in your power bill, but better efficiency is always better. Now this brings up the obvious question of, well, should you upgrade if you have a Ryzen 1 CPU? Because yes, Ryzen 2 does have better gaming performance, and gaming performance is something that there was always a big asterisk next to whenever discussing Ryzen 1 kind of overall performance. But is this boost enough to justify getting rid of your 1700X that you've been running for a 2700X? Now, I'm not going to make vague speculation for ages about whether or not you should, I think is a fairly clear answer. I think if you're rocking a Ryzen 7 CPU, there really isn't much point. Because yeah, you get lower voltages at the same core speed and you might be able to overclock your CPU from f instead of 4 gigahertz to like 4.3 gigahertz, although 4.3 gigahertz seems to be like a unicorn number in the same way that 4 gigahertz was for Ryzen 1. So yeah, if you're lucky, you might be able to get to 4.35 gigahertz. Ooh. If you have a 1700, a 1700X or an 1800X, wait for Ryzen 2. And well, by Ryzen 2, I mean Zen 2. Wait for next year when there's a genuine improvement that's gonna kind of actually be noticeable to you. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy Ryzen 2. If you're in the market for a new PC, it's a great option. If you were gonna buy a new CPU anyway, it is a genuine improvement over the previous generation. And that doesn't mean that people in the current generation of Ryzen CPUs don't necessarily have a reason to upgrade because if you had something like a Ryzen 3 CPU, maybe a 1300, and you upgrade to a 2600X, you're gonna have a huge huge improvement in performance. You're not only getting two extra cores, but you're getting higher clock speeds. 
And if you have something like a 1600 or a 1500, anything that falls under the Ryzen 5 lineup of CPUs, you've also got a great option of going to a 2700 or a 2700X because it's not a hugely expensive upgrade because you don't have to get a new motherboard or whatever. And you're going to get, again, two extra cores, higher frequency, and just a lot of good stuff that you didn't have with your 1600X. So I think in the context of AMD's kind of generational improvement compared to Intel's generational improvements, AMD's doing it right. They're giving people from the lower end of their previous generation a really enticing upgrade to go higher up the product stack in a new generation of CPUs as opposed to the Intel platform is that you don't have to buy a new motherboard. They don't arbitrarily change the amount of pins in a socket so that you can't go from, I don't know, a 4770K to a 7700K. You can't do that because, well, the CPUs not going to fit in the socket. Now, I do realize I didn't go into a huge amount of detail in this video, but this video isn't supposed to be about a huge amount of detail. It's supposed to be about a clear answer of whether or not it's going to be worth it for you to upgrade. So most of the information that I got for this video, I sourced from tech YouTubers, mainly Gamers Nexus. So if you want more detail on this topic, do check out their video. Steve goes into a huge amount of detail and he can give you a really good indication of what kind of performance you should be expecting, how much of an improvement it's going to be, and yeah, just general tastiness about Ryzen. If you like the video, do like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Um, if you didn't like it, dislike it, but please don't forget to tell me in the comment section below what your problem was with the video so that I can fix it in future videos. It's all about improving. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.